we're rolling. John Keats was an English Romantic poet. Although his poems were not well, generally well received by critics during his life, his reputation grew after his death, so that by the end of the 19th century, he'd become one of the most beloved English poets. Today, I'll be analysing two of his poems, and drawing parallels between them and other poems we've studied. The first poem is Bright Star, Would I Were Steadfast As Thou Art, which is written in 1818, and the second is La Belle Dame Sans Merci, which is written in 1819. The voice in Bright Star, While I Steadfast As Thou Art, addresses a star, expressing its desire to be as constant as the star. Keats wrote the love sonnet as a declaration of his love to Fanny Brown, the woman he would later become betrothed to. The sonnet form can be identified through the use of 14 lines. Keats merges two traditional sonnet forms, Shakespearean sonnet and Italian sonnet. The poem follows the Italian sonnet with the main idea of the desirable characteristics of a start developed in the first eight lines and the secondary idea of the speaker's eternal love developed in the last six lines. The Shakespearean sonnet rhyme scheme is followed with A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F and the metre is also in iambic pentameter. Keats primarily uses personification and alliteration to develop the idea of the natural world, of man in the natural world. The symbol of the star is introduced in line one and is given human characteristics through the description of it watching and being patient and sleepless. The alliteration of star and steadfast in line one and still and steadfast in line nine adds emphasis to the characteristics of the star that the speaker wishes to add. The use of the M dash at the end of line eight and the start of line nine mark the introduction of the secondary idea of love in the poem. This is conveyed through the parallelism of forever in lines 11 and 12 and the link between the longevity of the star and the speaker's love. The pun of the word still, meaning both motionless and always, underlines the idea of eternal love, which the speaker wishes to express by being motionless for all eternity with his head on his lover's chest. Bright Star, While I Steadfast As Thou Art, has similar aspects to many of Shakespeare's sonnets, but particular to son particularly to Sonnet 18. Sonnet 18 has the same sonnet form and metre, both poems also share connections between love and nature, with Sonnet 18 comparing a lady to a summer's day and bright star while I steadfast as thou art addressing a star. The Sonnet bright star while I steadfast as thou art. The idea of love was enthralling and invigorating. The rhyme and metre adds a rhythmic and natural feeling to the poem and the ideas of love presented, making it appealing to engage in. Keats wrote La Bella Dame Sans Merci, or The Beautiful Lady Without Mercy in English, just prior to his death. In the poem, the speaker came, comes across a knight and questions him about his haggard appearance. The knight's response follows the rest of the poem. He tells the speaker that a fairy lady seduced him. After she lulled him into sleeping, he had a nightmare about all the other dead kings and princesses that the lady had seduced. The knight then woke up alone and on a hillside. La Belle Dame Sans Merci is a narrative poem divided into 12 quatrains. Each quatrain rhymes according to the A, B, C, B pattern. The basic meter of the poem is iambic tetrameter. However, in the fourth line of each stanza, there are only three stressed syllables. The misleading nature of love is explored in La Belle Dame Sans Merci by the reversal of floral metaphors. Traditionally, flowers are symbols of love. However, in line 11, Roses are used to describe the knight's fading cheeks, and in line 9, lilies are used as a symbol of death. This idea is reinforced through the dreams and descriptions of the knight's love being fairy-like, which adds to the surreal nature of his feelings. Keats also explores the idea of women and femininity through the consonants and internal rhyme. The state of the speaker finds the knight in is emphasised by the, consonant, the consonants of L in alone and palely loitering. As the knight describes what he and the women did, the consonants remains in the reader's mind, in reinforcing the idea, the effect that the women had on him. The eternal rhyme of palely and aoli also works to highlight the negative effects of the women. La Belle Dame Sans Merci is an allusion to a much earlier work of literature by medieval romance poem Alain Chauteur. The poem itself has similar elements to medieval romance with knights, fairies and dream sequences. By titling the poem with the line from a famous romance, Keats introduces medieval associations right from the beginning. 
The poem contrasts to many traditional love poems, such as, such as Sonnet 116 by Shakespeare, because it warns against obsessive love. Sonnet 116 presents a vision of ideal love, love which sees a marriage of, two, of true minds as the ultimate to which we should all aspire. This ideal love is cautioned against in La Belle Dame Saint Merci because of the Knight's Tale. The ballad gave me opposing feelings to other poems as it acted as a warning against overzealous love. The change in metre, use of consonants and internal rhyme gave the, gave the poem a strong but at times unnatural feeling which was emphasised by the fairy descriptions. Thank you.